Good evening, good folks at home. It is Tuesday night. It's the locker room once again. Let's lock, let's load. Seatbelts on, fingers in, big show tonight. Dougie Hodgson and yours truly, Greg Blake. And I have got to say thank you, thank you, thank you. 30,000 viewers. So, Les Murray, have a look in the rear vision mirror because we're coming at the world game. We're going to bring you down. It is a huge show tonight. Stay with us, good folks at home. Look forward to your company. <laughs> And welcome back to the locker room. It is going to be a Tuesday night to savour. A Tuesday night that if you could, you would take it home and bathe in it. We're at the Copacabana nightclub in Smith Street, Fitzroy. We've got a very special guest lined up and I'm going to segue this perfectly in just a moment. But as I said, if you're checking out the locker room on a Tuesday night and you're checking out the Facebook page, sincerely, 30,000 viewers, we are so wrapped and so gratified that you're enjoying the program, especially you, Port Wogboy, my favourite uh, poster on the internet site. Uh, but we really, really appreciate your support. Copacabana Nightclub, did I mention that? Can't remember. We're at the Copacabana tonight. It is the former home of uh, the Fitzroy United, uh, Heidelberg United, Alexander Soccer Club. And as a, uh, a lovely segue into our special guest tonight, before I say hello to our special guest, I'll say hello to you, Dougie Hodgson. Uh, there's something terribly, terribly wrong with the way you dress tonight, but that's fine. Um, our special guest tonight, Andy Bazikas, a former Heidelberg United legend of the game and somebody with a wonderful perspective of the history of the game coming right back from the State League days in the early 70s. Andy, welcome. You don't look a day over 400. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, Greg. Look at us old bastards. Um, it's, it's great to catch up with you again. It's, it's been a long time. It's lovely and we shouldn't actually share the story of the, the last time we, we, we will, but we won't talk about an over 40s discotheque in Doncaster <laughs> on a Sunday night. And Dougie, welcome good to, to you, you as well. You look good fantastic. You, good to see you, Dougie. Well, Beanie, a bit of salsa's going on here, Blakey. I thought, well, might as well get me hat on. I've got me shirt. We'll talk about me shirt, but it was matching. Bit of matching colour, so good to see you, mate. And uh, we're going to go on to you. We're going to talk about your soccer career at the start, Andy. We're gonna, then we'll go on to your coaching career, because you've, you've had 60 games in the State League back in 70s, and then obviously 250 National League games. Mate, that's a hell of a career. Talk me through a little bit about where it started. Well, it started um, uh, at, at Fitzroy, to be um, precise, in 73. Uh, yep. Played uh, three seasons there before the, the National League came along, which was in 77. Uh, played an extra six seasons there. So, yeah, over, over 230 National League games and, uh, and about 60, um, 60 Premier League games. You banged in a few goals? Um, Normally I created a lot, but I had uh, had a few as well. Had so. a few, yeah. and, and, and it must be it must be mentioned too, Dougie, because you were too young to remember this. I uh, agree. But the Heidelberg, and we've talked about it a couple of times on the show, but there were some wonderful, wonderful National League teams in those early years, '77 through '82, '83. Andy, you'll remember many of them. But to get a, to actually be playing at Heidelberg at the time, you, you had to have some talent. So, and I mean, you're kind of the least recognised member of such an explosive side of them. But then, having said that, you're not too shy to mention that in that 1980 grand final, you were the man that set up three of the four goals. Well, um, I went through a lot of coaches back then as well, three or four coaches, and I think um, they all believed in me to actually start me off in that, in that team of, you can say, superstars back then as well. You know, six or seven players pl uh, representing Australia in the side, so... Um, and, and we didn't make too many changes throughout those years. That's why we kept together as a team. And that 1980 grand final, we put it all together and we actually had, a, had success. We, well, we, you're hang on, though, Andy. Yeah. There's a bridesmaid, bride's 90 coming in here because it was three attempts. Was it three attempts? Three attempts at it. Um, <coughs> which was the Ampol Cup was runners-up. Ampol Cup. Uh, the, the, the league by the a league point. Cup, league Cup and, and, and the league by a point as well. So it's, well, we really didn't want to finish bridesmaid again. So we, uh, it was probably the first time Sydney City, being the top side back then, ever copped four goals in a game. So 
it was a really good and performance. A, and a good game, to be fair, and, and to, to watch. And, so. and, 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 Andy, just going on, on this basic premise that you made the superstars uh, what they were, who were the players that you think you made their career look much better as a result of you being on the paddock? Well, you know, um, I, I, I only had the goalkeeper to beat, but Gary Cole was right next to me, so I, I set him up. So. Gary Cole was love one. You Cole. So Gary love you, Cole. Cole. Man, love. You need to understand, you'd be nothing without this man, Cole. Nothing. Jamie Payton's another one. <laughs> <laughs> he was an absolute pretender, Jamie Payton. I know Payton watches this show. This is the man that made you, JP. Um, you're looking at Jimmy Campbell in the middle, uh, Kenny Taylor in the middle, uh, Ferris Alamides in the middle as well. We're uh, one of the, the, the greatest players ever to... to to, to, to play in Australia, and that was Jimmy Rooney. Played over 100 times for Australia, so it's really, really delight to be able to play alongside those players. Let's, let's just Talking quick... about Australia, though, Blakey, you did, mate, AC Milan, 24 years of age. You got to put a bit of green and gold on. What was it like playing against AC Milan back then? Well, you know, it's... Um... I played five, five minutes of the game. Yeah, don't worry us. about that, viewers. He was on the paddock. That's all that matters. You're and, involved. And now I understand... <clears throat> The Italians would do anything to try and win the game. I was only five minutes in the game, and yet I got the first elbow when I touched the ball, and I started, my lips started bleeding. So um, it was that, that was good to, just to be on the park with the, with the Aussie guys. So, as a player, Andy, in terms of, of those years, and they really were golden years um, for the Heidelberg United Club and for yourself. Would they be? Would that period then be your greatest period as a player? Well. You talk to all the Heidelberg supporters and they all look back at that period and how... And remember And remember yeah. that, that time yeah. back then. And I would have to say, um, we were playing at the top level and playing against the best teams in Australia and we were competing and always in the top four. So in top three, top four. And I would have to say, they were fantastic years. I mean, after the 1980 grand final, doing a, a lap of one, I was, I was crying, I was in tears and... It just brought, you know, just brought some fantastic uh, uh, memories. Speaking yeah. of memories, though, Blakey, talk me through the nutmeg of uh, Charlie George. Well, the, you know, there was a few um, overseas players that came in and played in, in Australia, and Charlie George was one. And uh, he happened to, to, I happened to have the ball, and he happened to, to, to come running at me. So maybe it was lucky. I don't know. I just played the ball through his legs and. I turned around and go, see you later. He goes, well done, son. So, <laughs> so that, was, uh, that was quite good. Um, another experience was uh, with Malcolm, jo uh, Malcolm, Malcolm McDonald, McDonald from Newcastle. From Newcastle. He, he was a legend of a player back A legend, then, and mate. he's still a legend down at Newcastle as well. So um, he played for South Melbourne for about four or five games. Okay. And I played against him. But being Greek, um, South Melbourne uh, committee asked me to take him out to, to, to a Greek nightclub. So, by all means, <laughs> you know, I, I, we went there and I think we lasted five minutes because after five minutes he whispered it is me, in my ear. He goes, Andy, can we please leave? The music's too loud. <laughs> so, too loud for so he was a professional and we had to leave after five minutes. He played for, if I'm right or wrong, he played for Arsenal as well. Yes, he, he did. did. Left footer, good score goals. And so the, other, it, the other experience was uh, against Pelé in 72. Two. That was with the Santos. Victoria team. And... The coach told me to warm up because I was going to come on in the last... Uh, who was the manager? Who was the gaffer then, Andy? Who was, uh, who was in charge? There remember? was a current a guy called Curran back yep. in 72. And, um, He's got you warmed up, ready to go. It was, it was quite funny because as I was warming up, there was, a, there was 30, 33,000 at the game back then. And it was a weird experience because my legs felt like they were running before me and I was trying to catch up to my legs, trying to, you know, like the cartoons, yeah. when they try to catch us up. And then I came on the park and, uh, and the rest is history and I was just really, really uh, delighted to be walking out of, next to Pelé. Pelé. And, and, and we've legend. got a shared experience because I took a tablet at a nightclub once and felt like my legs were walking in front of me for about an hour. <laughs> Um, we've got to take a break. We've got a lot to talk about. Andy played through a great era in Australian soccer. You were on the locker room on a Tuesday night. We're at the Copacabana. We're good. We know it. We're going to come back and show it.
And welcome back to the locker room. It's Tuesday night. Andy Bazik is our special guest, my co-pilot for the evening, as always, Dougie Hodgson, looking resplendent in that uh, colour-coordinated vest he's got on. Explanations later during uh, Dougie's top. Uh, but Andy, I, I want to focus. You know, you mentioned some wonderful names, and I, again. Uh, you've heard me rant about this before, good folks at home, the, the disrespect that's been shown to all that came before the start of the A-League. And you've, also, you've already mentioned a couple of great names that came here as guest players and great teams that you've played against. Now I want to focus more on you and your reminiscences now, 30 or 40 years down the track. Who were the top four or five players that stick out in your mind? You know, we talked before a little bit about Zvadko Lewic from uh, Footscray JUST, but who are the players that, that sit in your head and you go, wow, they were just awesome to play with or against? The ones that just electrified you, Andy? Well, well the ones that tackled yeah. you. Well, I, I, I'd probably go more for the skillful ones, because that's what stands out in my, in my eyes, is, is the skill. And Kenny Bowden was probably one of the most skillful players I've ever seen. From Newcastle, yeah. Well, yeah, Newcastle. Yeah. And then Sydney, Sydney City. Sydney yep. City. Uh, Peter Shan was electrifying. He, had, he was really, really good. The flying Fairfielder. That's right. Yes. And... Um, I just want to mention two players, um, Paul Icon and um, and Ned Zelic. Uh, they were a little bit after me, but they actually played their careers out wide, um, forwards, uh, wingers. They were they started off as wingers, and then they they, they become centre halves. And I, Andy, it happens. Yeah. I start off at centre forward, and I end up back down there. That's right. And I just feel that starting off out there and seeing what the defence plays like, and then, and then probably adapt to yeah, the thing. Yeah, adapt to a defender. You can see a lot more, and they actually they. We, and and for all the smarties out there that still continue to not recognise the greatness of the NSL, get get on YouTube, find some videos of these players that Andy's talking about, and understand we were witnessing greatness. We probably just didn't know it at the time. Best coach, Andy, who had the most uh, profound influence on the career of the great Andy Bazikas. Well, um, I would have to say Len, uh, Len McKendry had a big uh, impact. And his name comes up a lot. Well, why? A lot of people do. Like, yeah. Why would you? What, the way he was, he professionalism, or the way he motivated, or he's actually the ability, the work ethics. I think. I think uh, he actually took me aside and, and worked one on one on me, which which no other coach did. Yeah. And that actually helped me quite a lot. And what he expected from me, so that actually helped me a lot. Plus, he was three years with us yeah. you know normally you, you get a lot of coaches in sack with in six months within a year but he actually lasted three years with us and and he made us play to the way he wanted us to play and um, and there was a lot of a lot of teams couldn't work out and we'll talk because you went into coaching and you had a little bit of success there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what I want to do, let's pose this. Let's pose this as a poser, a locker room poser, a, a sort of a dun 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 question mark. Where the hell, nobody, do you know, Andy, where is Len McKendry now? Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know. I reckon, this, I reckon Stubbsy will know. Stubbsy, it's Stubbsy the, get on the phone, the send a carrier Tell pigeon. Me. We want to solve the mystery of where is Len McKendry now and if he's still around the place, we need him as a guest. Yeah. He is an icon. He's iconic. And he's a mystery man. He's disappeared in the ether. So, Lenny McKendry, we, we're hunting we're you. We're coming you. for Sending you. Sending the boys to track you down. Now, coaching AB, Andrew Bazikas, superstar of the past. You, you went off into coaching at, at what year? Um, 91. It happened... Uh, I never even thought about coaching at the time. I had a bit of an injury... Uh, playing for Bulleen and I said to the to the committee and I said to the coach at the time who was Alan Gentry I said I think I'm going to have a, have half a season off or a year off because my knee's not right How old were you then Andy? I was 33 at the time yeah. and uh, and Alan was a very good bloke a very good coach and he said to me why don't you just help me out for the rest of the season and uh, and, 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 and try and Get from there. That, so, was in, that was nine, about 90? 90, 91. 91. And, uh, and I, I agreed. And through 91, um, we were about halfway through mid-table. And, um, and Alan said, Alan Gentry goes, I've had enough. I don't think I can do any more. I'm leaving. So I took over. And I had no... I mean, that's all the experience I had. 
Well, you didn't do too bad no, because you got beaten with goal difference coming into the end of the 91 of the season, though. The players you had playing for you then, Andy? Actually, um, sorry, not 90. It was 90. So it was 90 when I started. So 90, I, so 91 was no, the 91 difference. was the year where I actually took, took over. over. Took over. And, um, and that, yes, you're right. We, yeah. we, we, we lost on goal difference. Yep. Yeah, no. uh, but I had some good players back then. Likes of whom? I don't know. Uh, you would know this. Damien Murray. Absolutely, I do. Damien Murray came to the UK when I was at Sheffield United. He was over at Sheffield Wednesday on trial. Good mates of Carl Veer. Those two are great mates, Damien Murray and Carl Veer. Now, he came to me as a fullback. He goes, Andy, I'm a fullback. I go, yeah, that's fine. I'll play you fullback. So I played him for the first two games. I played him fullback. And he was, and he was quite quick. And he was creating more chances than my forwards. So, I mean, and, and having shots, more, more shots than my forwards. So I said, no, you're not, you're not a fullback. Let me play your striker, mate. <laughs> and, that, and, and the rest is history. So you made Damien Murray as well. That's another one. That's the idea. We've got to chalk this up. If we've got a scorecard, run it at the bottom of the screen. The players that Andy Bazikas made into superstars. The 93, though, was your, that was Boleyn's first well, ever VPL. Before you go to that, <laughs> can I... Mention a couple other players. Yeah, and you can also he mention that, you and know. you can also mention that you made me as a journalist, That's Andy. Right. I'm happy for you to claim that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by all means, um, Danny Tiado was another one that came to. He me. turned out half good. Yeah, 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 he, yeah he, he wasn't bad. He also coached Jeff, Jeff Oliver, yeah. Anthony Gribbag, Scotty Patterson, just to ring off a couple that you've been involved with and That's right. taught and educated. But the um, '93 season, first time Bulleen yes. ever won the VPL. How yeah, was it? Um, Astounding. You're overcome with You're emotion. Overcome overcome with emotion. With it's okay. We can pull the I tell you what, there were a few Chinzanos went down at the Veneto Club, Club that weekend as well. Well, we just had a, a reunion um, about six months ago. And when we saw each other, all the boys, we hugged each other. We, was, they were actually crying. That we, that, that's a, it's the closest knit team that I've ever, ever been associated with. And they all clambered round yeah. Andy Bazika and said, you made us, Andy, you made us. He's <laughs> making this show as well. We've got to take a break. I've got to take a couple of, uh, couple of antihistamines. I'm not feeling all that well tonight. I know don't care, but I don't care about you either, so we're even. See you after the break. <laughs> And welcome back to the locker room as we head into the home straight on this very special Tuesday night in which Andy Bazikas is our guest. My co-pilot, of course, is the inimitable Dougie Hodgson. Andy, as we always do, because we have become bitter old men, I certainly have, there's no doubt about that, um, the mirror is unforgiving, Andy, but we can always reflect back and say what we saw and what we lived through in the NSL days. I'm always interested... You know, the A-League has great leaps and bounds. The promotion has been exemplary, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. But in terms of the game itself, you know, if you were do, to do a comparison between, you know, your, your wonderful days in the NSL and, and the standard of the games we see now, where, where do you sit? Well, I think um, the A-League has brought more professionalism than, than back in our days because we, we trained uh, two or three times a week. I think uh, they trained twice a day. So um, they brought a lot more professionalism. Um, it's actually stopped uh, the Aussie players from going overseas because we're able to afford to pay, the, to, to pay these players to stay here. Um, Do you think that's affected the, um, the Australian national team too, though, Andy? Would you say that? Because by the Australian boys going overseas, go back to where my era was, yeah. we actually become better players. Yeah. And we actually become better players in that era to represent. If you look back in the last lot of Australian boys, they're all internationals yes. from overseas, yeah, yeah. which means they've learnt their trade overseas. Yeah, so yeah. has it affected, has there been a role on, would you say? I think, I think, um, um, it, it's been difficult as well. It's affected, it's been difficult as well because you can't really get the, the how can you get the overseas players and, and the local players you know, training together? I think it's very important that, that they're able to train together so many times within a year to be kept as a team. Um, now, this is where it's affected a few coaches in the past, and um, especially this one here. It's made it very hard for him to, to try and, and, and have a team to, 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 to play together. So, Andy, 70s, 80s, you're talking about professionalism, mate. Talk to me, where was the drinking? 
smoking after a 4 5 nil defeat. Because when I was a kid, I used to come in, there was a bloke in the corner with a fag. I was only a kid watching, to have a VB in the hand, good old Vic Health. Talk me through some of the things you must have seen in the 70s and 80s, mate. Well, Give me something. There, there was a lot of that happening. Uh, there was uh, two or three smokers in the side and, uh, and, and a lot of drinkers. Um, I think uh, I think two or three nil loss, a few beers, and we forgot about the game until the next game. But uh, but uh, saying that, I, I think the, the boys were pretty um, pretty serious about their stuff as well. So they, they, only they combined 60, both. Sixty stubbies after yeah, the game, seven to eight, which is <laughs> the right on. thing to do. Andy Bazika is our special guest on the locker room tonight. Before we wrap it up, Andy, as we're always curious to see where the great, great people of the game have gone to. Where's the journey taking you? What are you doing in life these days? Um, I, I, I'm working uh, as a... That's, that's <laughs> it. That's a start. Doing better than us. We're doing, we're doing this crap. <laughs> and I'm still involved in coaching as well. I'm coaching uh, Diamond Valley in the second division. And um, I, I'm, I'm still um, hard at it. Um, I'll never forget, I still want to win, and that's very important to me. No matter where I am, no matter what I do, I just want to be a winner. Yeah. And that, uh, that's a good way to go out with you tonight, Andy. The one thing I will say, in all sincerity, good folks at home, you had to be a pretty special player to play in that era. You had to be a pretty special player to play with that particular club. You were a, a genuine champion of the game, Andy. We're so glad and gratified you could be here tonight in front of our 30,000 viewers. Suck it up, SBS. Um, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you for tonight. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, uh, Andy. Thanks, Andy. And uh, before we go out tonight, Dougie, we've got ample time for you to, uh, to tell us about uh, this fashion disaster that you're wearing tonight. It's Dougie's shirt segment. To be fair though, to be getting about the end, I'll throw this. This is a, this is a, you can see on there the old JD trusses sponsored by your truly. If you ever turn around here, guys, and we have a look at the number on the back, that's the number 93. And what we had to do when I used to come back from the UK off season, I used to go and play with my mates down in Frankston. We were called, um, I won't call you what we are called, but we had to have a weigh in. So when we came in, Blakey, we'd have to get on the scales, and whatever you weighed, that's what number went on your shirt. But do you know, viewers, that we actually can only have two numbers on your shirt because the red balloon, better known as the old Gus McLeod, he was tapped in at over a ton. So he got double A. The, the laughter that we had, Black Ambarns, Bla Blakey, minute silence and people saying, what happened today, guys? said, yeah, unfortunately, Lassie died a few years ago. So it was just a bit of banter that went on. We had a welly boot. We had to wear a welly boot for a penalty, which is the old... Uh, Big butchers, welly boot to shoot the goal. Referees used to just look at us and go, look at these 11 drunks on the field having a crack. So Andy was talking about professionalism. We were professionalism. We were there, we were on time. You wouldn't have breathed on us. And the last one ever, we had a sock. One was orange, one was purple, one went on the left, one went on the right. So if you got it wrong on the way and home, it was a fine. That stuggy shirt. <laughs> Dougie Hodgson, the new poster boy for mental illness. Um, thank, thanks, Dougie. Thanks, Andy. Uh, and again, look, we're going to put it out there. We're posting it. Uh, the, the, the search for Len, Len McKendry will be relentless. It will be ongoing. We will have Len McKendry on the locker room as I live and breathe. In all sincerity, I think I said this before, though, 30,000 viewers. We've got a whole lot of people on Facebook on the locker room. We are so grateful. We hope you. Uh, let me put it this way. We hope you enjoy the locker room experience in, infinitely more than I enjoy working with Doug Hodgson. We will catch you rock stars in about seven days' time on the locker room. What word? I don't know. I'm trying, to say, I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out and I can't. So I'll just say goodbye. See you next week.